bunk bed. Bunk bed. <laughs> and you walk through the door, and then there was the bunk bed here, and then there was a wall over here with about this much space, and the, clock, the light socket was down there. We had the extension cord that came up, and we would mess up the pillows and the sheets, and we would make it look like I ran, and we ran night ups with our G.I. Joe dolls. <laughs> we don't need Mr. Magoo. We got it. Sky. And I woke up in the hospital, I was totally black and blue with my brother going out of school. Anyway, if it hadn't been for that, it probably wouldn't have popped out of my mouth. So I've seen the red fireball. A lot of people have. I would say that that opened me up because by the time I was 14, I started having a massive, incredible number of visions. I thought I was going insane. Living in Dedham outside of Massachusetts, and the high school library that we were at, sorry, that was wrong. Me, I was smart enough, I would get on the train, even at the age of 14, 13, 14, go all the way in town, Boston, John F. Kennedy Library. I tore that place apart for what I could find for Native American traditions. I found one very interesting book, The Lucentetic Plants of New England. <laughs> with a section on native tradition. So I was good. I was also wasted. So when we talk about certain things like the ayahuasca and things like this, there, there is the ayahuasca, the psilocybin, the saliva, kava, amanita muscaria. Yes. I got into about eight years worth of heavy use. I journeyed. I got real confused. I got real burnt out. And then I met a friend of mine, and whose name I would not remember, and I think that's purposeful somewhere in the attempt on how he left me. I would have doubt he probably, <coughs> you shall forget. Um, he was a Standing Rock Sioux native, probably about this much taller than me, and about that much wider than me. Huge, when he came through a doorway, the doorway came with him. And I met him through a friend of mine who was a chef at Wellesley College in Massachusetts, which is an all-ladies college. They would have mixers at certain times, so he would give us tickets. We would go there, and we would hang out, we'd go to the mixers, we'd be checking out the bands and partying down. Blah, 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 blah. One night out there, at the end of the thing, back in their little barracks that were on site, after the party, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning, and this guy comes walking through the door. He lived in the room down at the end. <laughs> he came walking through the door. With <clears throat> Get a stout in his hand. <laughs> Unbelievable. And he looked at me and he goes, Well, my friend Tommy had told him about me. I had some really intense conversations with that man and I got squared away. I got set up in a particular thing and thank God I did because my path at the time and that, I also almost went to prison. That's another story in itself. However, the path is what's interesting that I want to talk about. This path, green corn festivals are celebrations of religious ceremony prayer, prayer, uh, practice by eastern woodlands and southern tribes. That's the Creek, the Cherokee, Seminole, uh, Uchi, Iroquois, and some others. <coughs> the activities vary from tribe to tribe. Typically, the corn is not eaten until the Great Spirit is given proper thanks. So this is a seasonal a seasonal ceremony, making note of that. Certain tribes incorporate ball games and tournaments in this event, and cleansing and purification rites occur. This is interesting because this is the eastern, southeastern tribes of Native America and Native America acting like Aztecs and Mayans. Interestingly enough, the Maya were up in that area of the country at one time. There were several excursions made by the Maya that came up into what is now known as the Mound Builders area. That has great Mayan influence in it. Again, some of these people don't notice these things from the aerial views. What's unfortunate now is we're living in a country right now where we have the Republicans who want to sell it off for mining rights. They're going to destroy history because they are ready to plow down those mounds for minerals. 
Healing rituals, symbolic rituals and ceremonies were often held to bring participants into harmony with themselves. Their tribe and their environment for individual groups. As a sacred hoop exemplifies details of the creation and the journey of self. And when they do this, um, most of the herbs that are best recommended to be used are here. Sage, baysberry, red cedar, sweetgrass, and tobacco. For, to purify and to cleanse yourself. I would recommend do this as often as you get a chance. We have ceremonies at the Alta Vista Botanical Gardens real over here in Vista behind Brendel Park. And uh, I'll give you some information and you can get on one of my pages on Facebook that updates those ceremonies. We have those for solstice and equinox. The ghost dance is not very interesting. The movement was found in its origin of the Paiute Indian name of Oka. Let's see how much time we got left. A little bit. We well, still got half hour. Mm -hmm. The movement was found by the Paiute Indian name of Oka, who announced himself as the Messiah, having come to prepare the people for their salvation. The tradition, the tradition that led this to the ghost dance began in the 1870s, Western Great Basin, and the visions of Wajibwa, gray hair or concerning the earth renewal and the reintroduction of the spirits of ancient Numu, or the northern Paiute, which is in Utah. Central to the Natada, religion is the dance itself dancing in a circle pattern until an induced state of religious ecstasy is made with one's ancestors. There's a lot of people who want to try this. There's a lot of people who go all the way down to parts of India, I mean, uh, uh, Peru, excuse me, looking for the ayahuasca adventures. The thing that I find interesting about some of this is the number of people that go down there, the ones that come back with an interesting story. But nobody considers the ones that don't. Because those governments hide an awful lot of American deaths. The point I'm trying to make here is our Salomonian rites need to have an order in how they are conducted. And this is one of the things I'm saying right now. It's also very interesting that if you get involved with somebody who wants to take you on certain journeys, you best check themselves out somewhat as much as you can and for the nexus that they use. We're familiar with uh, in Arizona that killed several people on a swap. I can tell you what was wrong. In my thinking, the juniper mix that it was being used by the stone thrower was not made right. And it poisoned everybody in the tent. The fact that he didn't let them out sealed their death. So here's a guy who's playing native. Now I understand, <laughs> I try not to play native too much in the sense that I can't necessarily pinpoint my background. I know what I am educated in. So I will, I will admit to that right now. I have no problem admitting to you I am not some kind of all, you know, seeing eye on these things. I sat for two years with the uh, AIM while I was in Phoenix and I was greatly disappointed by what I ran into dealing with them, the American Indian movement. Found out that three of their lawyers weren't really lawyers, taking Indian Native money and just misleading their legal, their legal disputes. This is Indians using Indians, mind you. So being the type of person I am, I didn't last there very long after about two years, I got pissed off. What are you people doing? Your ancestors are rolling in their graves. But this is a hard life for a lot of natives. Reservation life. It's not the easiest thing. You can might as well be living in Colombia, the way some of these reservations are. So this movement began with his dream during a solar eclipse on January 1st, 1889. I want you to notice that it's the beginning of the year there. I want to check out the Mayan day. He claimed that in his dream he was taken into the spirit world and saw all natives being taken up into the sky while the earth opened to swallow the white man. His teachings followed the previous Paiute tradition 
predicting a type of renaissance. And the dance that was told to him was, when you get home, you must begin a dance to continue for five days. On the morning of the fifth day, all must bathe in the river and then return to their homes. You must all do this in the same way. You shall dance every six weeks, prepare a feast such that all may eat. This is a uh, artwork based on a photographer, James Mooney. And the artwork is done uh, when Wavoka came to Oklahoma to visit the Cheyenne and Arapaho. This is 1916-1917, right in that time period. And this is, this is how they circled each other. And you have Wavoka When the dance spread to the Lakota, the BIA became alarmed. That's the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which are part of the House of Interior. A lot of bad people. So it's interesting. I mean, it's interesting to me that some of the same people that like to run the BIA and work for the BIA also work in the incarceration and prison system. They're also the people that come to our sun dances with rifles with our children. Ah! People and their gun bags. Yeah. There you go. They all watch for a seeing eye. So the BIA agents charged the Lakota sent tribal police to arrest Sitting Bull at the time. The struggle that fought when Sitting Bull was killed, along with a number of the policemen. A small detachment of cavalry eventually rescued the remaining policemen. The United States then sent the South 7th Cavalry to disarm the Lakota and take control during the events that followed known as Wounded Knee Massacre, December 29th. 1890, 457 soldiers opened fire on the Sioux, killing more than 200 of them. This happened in less than two minutes. And it was basically all over. Ghost dance reached a peak just before 1890, when it became apparent that ghost shirts did not protect them from the bullets. Geronimo is famous for one of these, these, these spirit shirts. And the thing that's interesting about Geronimo was the number of bullets that must have been fired at him that never killed him. Geronimo was an interesting leader in the sense that he didn't, you know, as many times as they hunted him, it took a long time before he gave himself up and then he was killed. <coughs> Current followers of the ghost dance are convinced that the path well, anyway, back to just the thing. Wavoka, disturbed by the death threats and disappointed by many of the reinterpretations of his vision, gave up his public speaking. Uh, he remained around for a while and uh, receiving visitors and such until the end of his life in 1932. Current followers of the ghost dance today, though, uh, work with the path, still reunite them with their ancestors entering from the spirit world. These spirits are called upon to heal those in need and help protect Mother Earth. The dance has not stopped. So, in those considerations, if there wasn't, uh, and somebody asked me, you know, you ought to give a talk on prophecy. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if you'd like what I have to say. But in this native sense, when time stops, when time freezes into a particular place, the Mayan calendar is a perfect example. The pyramids of Egypt is another example. When these things get frozen in place and they represent something to us, we need to understand them directly because you know why? That cycle is going to come back. There's not a single edifice anywhere in the globe today that does not have a representation of an astral cycle that will not repeat. As a matter of fact, those edifices represent the fact that they repeat because it took millions of years for people to conceive how to build them, where to build them. This isn't something that some king woke up with and said, my people shall build this. No, it went on for hundreds of years, passed from one leadership to another in order to build and, fa and fabricate most of these edifices. And regardless of whether you want to consider the Sonics as going to build certain sites, that's another story in itself, and I'm a very strong believer in the possibility that that's exactly how it was done. A technology that has died and faded from existence rather than one we don't understand. We don't understand it, we're just missing it. When you can move tons of stone with sound, 
One of the things I, I wanted to note in some place in, the, in my Egyptological studies was the very word mason, mason. Mason in Egypt means moved by sound. Wow. That's interesting. So, meanwhile, the world will return to a primordial state of natural beauty, opening to swallow up all those who do not have a strong spirit upon the earth. This in its relationship between the ghost dance, the blue kachina, and the sun dance all represent a particular level of Native American tradition that has a lot to do with what we're experiencing right now, politically, socially, economically, religiously. Every one of these dances was something that the natives did and tried to protect the country even though it wasn't something they had in their possession anymore. Prophecy is very powerful. The so is an individual who enforces it. I have the expression that the warrior is not coming.